Hello everybody. So um, you might have seen that there are some NFTs who have a 3D image in the preview. And how they do that is they have in their metadata, in the animation URL, they have a GLB file, which is a 3D file. And today I'm going to show you how we can use these uh, in our game. So that you can then just um, select one of these 3D NFTs and then you can directly use it in your game. So to do that, we're going to follow the instructions on the Soulplay Unity SDK. So first of all, we create a new project and then we uh, import the package. So I prepared that here already. I'm going to create a new project. So that we do by window package manager from git URL. And then we just paste it in here and let it install. Then we download these two packages here, the git LFS fast installer and the Soulplay uh, 0.5 alpha package. And then we import them in Unity. So we just go to... Okay, now we uh, import the package from the 3D file loader, GLFS fast. So just double click, import it. And then it asks us to add the scoped registry which is just how they distribute. Yeah, so that just opens this little uh, pop-up here and tells us from where it will install this package. And um, yeah, after we install this one, then we're gonna install the Soulplay Unity package. So here you can see now we have a GLTF fast dependency and now we put in the Soulplay package, which is this one, import. And yeah, now we are done and now we're going to set up a little scene and I'll show you then afterwards um, how you load the 3D NFTs. So we have an empty scene. We put in the Soulplay prefab. Then we create the canvas. The canvas we set to scale with screen size. And then we put it to full HD. 1920 times 1080. And we make it expand and hide. And then we pick a prefab here from the bottom. We put the login screen. We import the TextMess Pro Essentials. Then we create an empty game object. Make it expand. Then we put there the NFT screen and the token screen. And then we're going to look at it. And then we put a horizontal layout group. And then we make it expand and width and height. And now we have this nice little um, scene here. And now in the login screen, we assign the connected route. So this means this one will be enabled as soon as we are logged in. And then we put in the um, blimp system. So this will just show some um, debug information on the screen, like whenever you do a transaction or so on. And then we also put the orca swap pop up so that we can also do um, token swaps. So we just put it below the connected route. And this one will then uh, always enable and disable when, um, when you do a token swap. Yeah, so now we can already start our scene and we can log in to definite. This will then uh, automatically give us an airdrop and then we can already mint our first NFT. So we're going to mint a 3D NFT and we're going to mint a normal NFT. And here you can already see um, yeah, the, the 3D NFT. And I'm going to quickly show you how this looks in scene. So uh, in the scene view you can see that um, that it doesn't look as nice, but... Um, I'm gonna show you why this. So the trick is that in this NFT item view, we have um, the 3D object, which is loaded into this model scene here. And then we have a camera which renders this NFT, this 3D object, and it puts it into a render texture. And the render texture is assigned to the raw image here. And it's only rendering the 3D image, uh, the 3D model in a certain 
render layer so it's not seen by the ui so that's why it works like this that it's just on top of ui and also you can like it also does work with scroll views and so on and the camera also has a special script which always um, makes it fit to the size of the nft because we don't know when we load a 3d nft by url which size it will have so it's like the camera is always checking the bounds of the nft and then tries to fit it directly into the screen that's why it also has this funny little um going back and forth because it's um sometimes bigger sometimes smaller from the camera view but i could also change this by only setting it once but it, i found it looks also quite nice that it's like moving a little bit <laughs> and if you want to use the um the 3d item as a as a character in your game, I will show you now how this is done. So if you select it, you can see it's loaded here in the game and I can immediately play with it. Um, this is done here in the player controller in the flappy game example. And in the code, it's done like this. Um, I just set set sprite, I call set sprite from NFT with the soul play NFT. And when the animation URL is set, then I take the GLTF asset, which is um, an asset from the library that we imported earlier. And then I say load and then I say load the animation URL. And as soon as it's, uh, it is loaded, I am waiting for a frame. And then I um, take the first uh, child from, from the thing that is loaded, which is the scene here. And then I get the bounce from that. And then I scale it so that it uh, fits into the bounds that I want because it's kind of difficult to know beforehand which size the NFT will have. So I'm um, getting all the bounds from the children and then I divide the target bounds that I want to have by the current bounds of the NFT item. And then I set the scale. So in this case you can see it's scaled to 0 0.00005. Um, yeah, because it's just a size that, that fits well. So I'm actually, yeah, I'm using for target bounds, I use the death controller. So I wanted to fit into the death square. As you can see, this car here has the pivot a little bit offset. If I, for example, use this bit mato, then it fits much better. I currently don't have one, but I can show you here in the game. If I use this with Mato, then it like fits way better. So you could maybe um, offset the pivot a little bit if your NFT doesn't fit perfectly. Yeah, and the NFT that's currently selected, you can always uh, get uh, via the NFT service. So service factory, resolve, NFT service, selected NFT, if there is one selected. And if there wasn't one selected that, then you can uh, Add a handler to the message router, NFT selected, and as soon as there is one selected, this message will be triggered, and then you can call a handler, register a handler uh, for this message, and then in this message, you will have the selected NFT, like the new NFT, and then you can set it from there. So the usual way is always in start, you check if there's one already selected, then you do something, or you listen to this message and then set it later. And yeah, that's already it for the um, yeah, for this small introduction on how to use it and how to set up the project. And subscribe to the channel so we get more subscribers and we get also more videos. And um, I hope I can see some of you next week at the Breakpoint conference in Lisbon. And yeah, have a good weekend everybody. Bye.